Genetic factors affecting population size. Competition. What is intraspecific competition? What factors do different species compete for? What is interspecific competition? How does interspecific competition influence population size? Competition and biotic factors. So where two or more individuals share a resource, light or food, space or oxygen, um, that is not actually enough to satisfy all the requirements, then the result is competition. So when competition is between the same species, as you can see here, between the lions, that is intraspecific. When it's between members of different species, like you can see the lion and the hyena, that is interspecific competition. So intraspecific competition is when individuals of the same species compete for resources such as food, water, breeding sites, etc. It's the availability of these resources that determine population size. And the greater the availability, the larger the population. So as an example of intraspecific competition, limpets compete for algae. If there's more algae available, then there'll be a larger limpet population. When oak trees compete for the resources, it is the dominant oak trees which will survive. Robins compete for breeding territory. When the food is scarce, territories need to be larger to provide enough food. Therefore, there'll be fewer territories and fewer breeding pairs. Therefore, the population size will be smaller. Another example. Um, so this graph here shows the results of sowing different numbers of seeds into small pots. The more seeds that are sown, and therefore the larger the number of plants that grow in it, the fewer seeds these plants manage to produce. So you can see, if you plant too many seeds per pot, then the number of seeds per plant decreases. If you put less seeds per pot, then the number of seeds per plant increases. So the plants are competing with one another for water, light and mineral ions. And as you increase the number per pot, you reduce the reproductive capacity of each plant. So interspecific competition now occurs when individuals of different species compete for resources like food or light, etc. The population of this species will steadily increase while the other species will diminish. And if the conditions remain the same, this will lead to the complete removal of one species, which is known as the competitive exclusion principle. And this principle states that two species comp competing for the same resources cannot ultimately coexist. The competitive exclusion is where two species are comp competing for limited resources and the one that uses the resources more effectively will eliminate the other. And no two species can occupy the same niche indefinitely when resources are limiting. So as an example of competitive exclusion and, and the fact that no two species can occupy the same niche. Now, it might appear like two species are occupying the same niche, but if you look closely at what they're actually eating, it might you might find that it's slightly different. So, for instance, there's two species of seabirds, which are shags and cormorants, and they look like they're appear, they, they appear like they're occupying the same niche. They live and nest on the same type of cliff face, and they eat fish from the sea. But if you look closely, you would find that shags feed on eels and herring, whereas cormorants eat flash fish, flatfish, gobies and shrimps, and therefore they must occupy different niches. You should never have, you can never have two species occupying the same exact niche. So to show how a factor influences the size of a population, it's important to link it to the birth and death rate of individuals in a population. For example, an increase in pop food supply doesn't necessarily mean there will be more individuals. It could just mean that they're bigger, faster individuals. 
Um, therefore, it's important to show how a factor such as change in food affects the number of individuals in that population. For example, a decrease in food supply could lead to death by starvation and therefore reduce population size. If you increase the food, it could mean that more individuals survive and therefore increase the probability they'll reproduce and therefore the population will increase. And this effect therefore takes longer to influence population size. So as an example here, you've got abundant food would be this high feeding rate, um, lots of immigration, lots of successful reproduction. Therefore, the numbers will increase rapidly. But then, because the numbers are increasing rapidly, the food supply becomes scarce, um, causing competition for food. And then, eventually, you get starvation, lack of reproduction, emigration, the numbers will decline, and the feeding rate declines. But because they then declined, the food supply then increases, and the whole cycle starts again. Another example of interspecific competi competition is the red and grey squirrels. So red squirrels are native to the British Isles and exclusively occupied a particular niche until about 130 years ago when the grey squirrel was introduced from North America. And the grey squirrel is generally more aggressive and has a more varied diet, so it has that competitive advantage. Since then, they've been competing for food and territory. So there's now an estimated 2.5 million grey squirrels and only 160,000 red squirrels in the British Isles. The red squirrel population is mostly found in Wales and Scotland. So you can see that as the grey squirrels increased, the red squirrels declined. Another example is paramecium. So when both species were growing together in the same culture, both species grew well first initially but then once the food became in short supply and um, the p-chordatum was less successful you can see it declining here and its numbers declined where the p aurelia increased and that is interspecific competition which is affecting population size of the p-chordatum causing it to be smaller than it should have otherwise been another example Two native barnacles, semi-balanus and chthalamus. Uh, chthalamus can live higher up in the shore. Lower down the shore is semi-balanus, is able to feed for longer periods and grows quicker. So on the lower shore, you find semi-balanus and that outcompetes the chthalamus. However, in the Second World War, the Australian barnacle, Eminium modestus, Invest, uh, invaded British shores and it actually outcompetes both of the native barnacles as because it can withstand extremes of temperatures, it can tolerate lower salinities, it has faster feeding rate and rate of growth and therefore it has that competitive advantage and will eventually lead to competitive exclusion. Now looking at what makes a good competitor in plants. So weeds are very good competitors. And the reason is because they rapidly produce many easily dispersed seeds. The seeds germinate rapidly. They're fairly resistant to herbicides. They grow and flower quickly. The leaves spread out over the ground. They have large tap root, which makes it difficult to remove. The roots release LSD allelopathic chemicals which prevent growth of other plants so weeds are very successful interspecific competitors um just an example of a boom and bust growth curve um so this would be things like an algal bloom so you'll have a very rapid exponential growth but then when there's so many in the same area what can happen is the food supply becomes scarce and therefore the um, population of algae will then rapidly decline. And that's called a boom and bust growth curve due to overcrowding. And we come back to this um, 
example with aphids. And something that birds can do, could be birds of the same species to prevent intraspecific competition, is they can do something called resource partitioning. Or this could be between different species um, to prevent inter-specific competition. But resource partitioning means that you will have different kind of areas that they can feed on. So different finches, different species of finch prevent inter-specific competition by having different beak sizes so that they can eat different types of insect or plants and that allows them to not have to compete as much as they otherwise would.